In this lesson, we're going to talk about data frames. The first thing we're going to do is create a couple of vectors. And so I have here a vector of integer values, v1, and a vector of character values, v2. And then here on line 10, what I'm going to do is take those two vectors and create a data frame out of them. And I'm going to do that by calling this data frame function and passing my v1 and v2 vectors in as columns, column one and column two. So I name the column and then I assign a vector to that column and I assign the vector v2 to column two. Both of those come into this data frame function and what we get out is a data frame of four rows and two columns. And I can access those columns similar to the way we did with the lists with this dollar sign syntax. So I can say data frame one, df1, dollar col1. And when I run this, what I get back is the column one values. So those are the vector values in column one, and they are sent to the console. And similarly with the column two, I can run that df1 dollar sign column two and see the values in column two. And now you're looking at that dollar sign syntax and saying, hey, haven't I seen that before? And you have, you saw that if you remember on the lists lesson, that dollar sign was how you accessed an item in a list. And what's interesting about R is that similarity is not a coincidence. That's what a data frame actually is. A data frame is actually a list of vectors. And I can see that by running this type of function here on my data frame variable df1 and see it's telling me that this is actually a list. It's a list of vectors. That's what a data frame is. And that's a very fundamental understanding that a lot of our training doesn't tell you. But once you understand that, it makes, it makes R a lot easier to understand what's really happening. And so because this thing is a list of vectors, I can use the same syntax that I used with lists. My double bracket syntax with a position one here will return the first item in my list which is column one in my data frame. And same thing I can do with the named list item I can do with the double bracket syntax and the named column, column one, passed into my double brackets returns that same vector. Now what's a little bit different is that a data frame is a two-dimensional structure, right? It has rows and columns. And so for a data frame, I then have a little bit different subsetting features. I have this two-positional bracket syntax. Remember with the vectors and the lists, we had one position subset brackets. For data frames, we actually have a two-position subset bracket. In the first position, is the rows, and in the second position is the columns. So left is rows, right is columns. And if you leave one of these positional subset values empty, then that means just return all of them. So when I say two comma blank here on the data frame subset, what I'm asking for is give me the entire second row. And when I run this, um, subset here, you'll see that what is returned is row two, and that has the values from my second row, both columns, column one, column two, the values two and B right here. And just like we saw previously with the vectors, if I pass in a vector of positions, in this case, a vector of row positions, row one and row two, pass that in as a vector in the first left position of my subset brackets for my data frame. What I then get is 
two rows back, rows one and two, both columns. Likewise, I can pick off a column by saying I want only column two. That will return column two uh, as a vector. Notice that this is returning um, a single vector of values. And if I wanted to pick off an individual cell in my data frame, one value, I could do that by specifying both the row and column of the cell that I want. So this is, I'm, I'm asking here for row two, column two. So row two, column two, this should give me B back and it does. And similar to the vectors and lists, I can also use this bracket syntax for assignment. I can actually go the other direction and place a value in my data frame using the subset brackets. And so here I'm going to replace that B that we just extracted. I'm going to replace the value B with this value Q um, in position 2, 2 by assigning the Q to my subset brackets. And then when I run my data frame, you can see that that B is gone. It's now replaced with this value too. And if I wanted to add an entirely new column to my data frame, how would I do that? Well, I would do that the same way that we did with the lists. You can use dollar syntax or double bracket syntax with a brand new variable name that doesn't exist on my data frame. This data frame only has Cal1 and Cal2. If I then give it a new name, Cal3, assign it a new vector, then I can add that column three to my data frame. Very easy to do. Data frames are incredibly easy to manipulate. And so what do I do if I want to get some statistics out of those data frame columns? Well, remember that when you access a column in your data frame using dollar syntax or double bracket syntax, what it's going to return is the vector of values in that column. And so I can then use that syntax to return the vector and pass it straight into a vectorized function. So here's my vectorized function mean. And when I pass column three into my mean function, I get the mean of column three, which is 4.5. And if I wanted to then get the min and max values from that column, I could. I can see that the min value is two, which is correct. And the max value is eight, which is also correct. Just like with the lists, a data frame has names and you can return those names with the names function, if I wanted to get a vector of all the column names in my data set, I could do that. And if I wanted to pick off a column and assign it to a brand new variable, right, as a vector, I can do that. And if I wanted to delete a column in my data frame, I could do that the exact same way we did with the list with this special keyword here, NULL, all caps, N-U-L-L, and assign the NULL value to the column that you want to delete, and you will kill that column. Lastly, I want to point out a couple of uh, sample data frames that are very commonly used in our documentation and in examples, um, they're very often used for testing different functions in R. That is the empty cars and iris sample data frames. These come with base R. You just have to type the name. They're always there. You don't have to do anything. Just type empty cars and you will see 
the empty cars data frame. And these are cars from 1973 and some various features of those cars have been captured, the mileage, the number of cylinders and so forth. And this is a very nice data set to work with because it's not very big and it has a little variety of numerical values that you can play with. The iris sample data frame is a little bit longer. This empty cars is 32 rows. This iris is 150 rows. And this is useful because um, this data set is grouped into three blocks of 50 rows each by this species column. And so when you want to play around with a data set grouping, this is frequently a good choice of data sets to use. And if you're dissatisfied with MT cars and iris, there's a lot more sample data. So if you type data sets and then colon colon, what you'll see is this big list of sample data frames that you can use anytime you want. You can play around with these. If you're practicing learning R, um, this is a nice set of data sets to play with. And I just want to warn you that not all of these things are actually data frames. Some of them are lists, some of them are matrices or vectors. So you'll have to actually try it out and make sure that you're getting what you expect. The key points from this lesson are that a data frame is actually a list of vectors. So you know what a list is and you know what a vector is. A data frame is a list of vectors. And you can access a data frame using dollar sign syntax or double bracket syntax, just like you did with the list. And you can subset the rows and columns of a data frame using that two positional bracket syntax the first position is the rows, and the second position is the columns. And because a data frame is a list, it can be then also manipulated like a list. And because the columns are vectors, you can pass those columns into vectorized functions and get results back. And if you want to play around with data frames, the empty cars and iris data frames are good choices and they're commonly used in examples in the R documentation. What I suggest you do next is just create a few data frames. You can do that with the data.frame function, pass some vectors into that and create new data frames. You can practice subsetting those data frames with the subset operators, you can pass those columns in to vectorize functions. And you can also look at the empty cars and iris sample data sets. And it would be a very good idea to practice manipulating those. Just play around until you get comfortable with the R concept of a data frame.